Builders. I'm Jake Adams in the studio, in the workshop inside the studio. And I just wanted to share with you something that has finally kind of come together. I put a lot of thought and effort into creating certain systems and subsystems here at the studio, just like these water vats so that they work flawlessly for my needs. And my newest triumph, I could say, is my self-cleaning flow-through bandsaw. Let me show you what I did, and then we're gonna go grab a coral from one of the coral flats and uh, go ahead and cut up something that is way overdue to go under the saw. So here it is, one of the hobby's most, uh, I guess, popular bandsaws for its rugged durability. Um, so normally what you would do with a bandsaw like this is you just kind of open up the lid. Yeah, just put that right there. Put some water in here, not too much. Then you turn it on. And once you're done, you have to really clean it up because you don't want that coral funk or that coral slime um, staying in there. So what I did is I actually picked up this trick, part of it at least from Worldwide Corals, is I put a reservoir overhead and it really doesn't take that much water um, to keep the, uh, the blade wet. That's all you need. You just need to keep it wet. Um, but in this scenario, um, it basically flows through very slowly. I've got my, my valve adjustment right here. And instead of it pulling up inside, it just drains straight out right there. So what I can do to set this up, go ahead and, oh, it's harder, harder to do with one hand, is I can pull it out just like that. And since it's right next to the sink, it can flow through. And uh, I also put a little magnet on the, uh, the power cord, just to kind of be able to keep it out of the way. So um, let's, Go over to the coral flats. There's this one coral that I've been meaning to uh, do some work on for a while. But before we do that, um, I like to have my fragging and gluing tools ready before I go. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple pieces of travertine, crack into my polyp lab super glue tube. We're gonna get one of those uh, sorted out. That's almost ready, and we can't just work on the counter, so. There we go. So now I'm gonna go over to one of my coral flats that's um, got a whole diversity of stuff. Actually, before I jump into that, I wanna show you we have some, something big, something almost professional, you would say, planned for this weekend, and here it is. Here it is. This weekend, I'm gonna be putting in a very intense session uh, for one of our first kind of video series here at the studio. So stay tuned because it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be really fun. And I think we're gonna dive into some topics that um, is way overdue for the reef aquarium hobby. So let me give you a look here at my coral flat. No filter, a little bit bluish light, but it's, you know, it's mostly, mostly white in real life. And so the coral that I wanna work on is this one, this one right here. This is probably legitimately one of the rarest corals in the aquarium hobby. I've actually only seen it a few times. And um, one of those times was when I actually collected it. So this is Gardenoceris. And I call this kind of like a, the honeycomb coral. Um, I've been keeping it in low light, so it's related to Pavona. But um, this is a chunk. I think I picked this up from Live Aquaria. Thank you, Kevin. Um, but this is a really, really neat coral that um, I see diving often enough, but um, for some reason, it's just never really made it into the aquarium hobby. I remember there was a time where cultured pieces actually were available in the aquarium hobby, and um, they just didn't look like anything. And if you don't know what this coral can do, um, you wouldn't want to grow it either. But this is like a pavona that has honeycomb style cells and normally it grows into a ball, but if you train it right, it actually will grow um, as a flat plate. So what am I missing? Okay, so now we just need some water, some water for the bandsaw. Uh, you might or may not have noticed, I'm really aiming to do this video in one take. So we're gonna get some seawater here. Don't even need that much. I've already taken the, uh, the bandsaw for uh, a spin, I guess you could say, a couple times and uh, I totally, filled it up way more than necessary. So 
Just going to put some water here in my reservoir. Whee! Just need enough to get over that little drain. Is that enough? Yeah, that's enough. All right, so now I'm gonna set you up to be able to see what I'm fragging. Is this gonna work? Is this, can we do this? Oh yeah, there it is. All right. All right, well let's get the crack a lack in. We're plugged in. Don't have any water yet, but the water actually comes right into the sponge that keeps this moist. So I only have to turn up a little bit and that's still wet. Make sure it's flowing good. We've got some juice. We got some juicy juice. All right, let's get the crack a lack in. All right, so actually, one of the more important things to do before you frag a coral is figure out where you're gonna cut it. This is a really amorphous colony. It's, uh, I don't know what to do with this one, but I think what I plan to do is just cut, I don't know, I'm just gonna probably follow this groove right here and just try to free up some pieces and uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. But yeah, because in its current shape, its current form, it is not the best. All right, there we go. You see the drip right here that lets me know that I have just enough water going through this uh, bandsaw. Oh man, this is so overdue. Ooh. All right, look at that. Just perfect little cut. Got a little turn in it. Just gonna go ahead and uh, hold that thought. I need to rinse off some of this funk. I've got a lot of uh, kind of, uh, you know, cut powder, cut limestone powder, so just go ahead and rinse it off so I can get a better look what I'm working on. That's a good little chunk. I definitely want to cut off this nub right here. And then this one, hmm, I really hate the shape of this one. I think this is the one that's gonna be cut up into a bunch of pieces. And then maybe that one will be saved as the mother, the mother piece. All right, so let's start with this one right here, just because I have a nub in mind. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be kind of pretty once it grows out and really develops and what into what it should be. Go. Nice little frag. They always look like crap right after you cut them, but I will go ahead and glue this guy down, and I think I'm gonna cut his butt off so we can get a little bit more of the the business end facing the light. There we go. All right. Okay, that's a good piece. What's this guy doing? Mmm. Mmm. All right. There we are. Oh man, that is so mutilated. Yeah, that's gonna grow down onto a tile very nicely. So we got two nubs ready to go. This is the, uh, the so-called so mother piece, I think. Yeah, that's gonna be good. And then this one is, oh, this one's actually pretty good too. All right, I think that's gonna do it. I think that's gonna do it for these guys. So now, oh, we got the sink rack here. This is perfect. So now what I can do, uh, go ahead and shut off the flow. Barely use like any water. And uh, you can see that there's really not much down in there yet. You can see some of the spray a little bit, um, but that was just, just enough water to lubricate the, uh, to lubricate the sauce. So all I have to do now, is go ahead and give this a rinse. like that, and then to clean this up, since I'm right over here by the sink, I can just go like this, and get a bit of light rinse on it, and uh, then it just, this is the self-cleaning part. I mean, obviously it takes a little bit of handling, but I don't think there is a, I don't think there is a smoother, faster way to keep this saw going and flowing because that's one of the things that has actually slowed me down from doing the cuttings that I need. It's because it's such a pain in the butt to keep the sinks clean because without this little drain hose basically going straight into the sink, 
um, basically have to take this whole, uh, have to tip the whole thing over. So, um, so now the cleanup, cleanup is going, and uh, I can just go ahead and put the plug back where I want it, and I can actually, I can even, oh, I missed a spot. You can even, there we go, rinse the top. So, um, I guess the last step of cleanup is one thing I can do is I'm thinking about putting kind of a uh, bypass valve to get rid of the seawater, and then I can fill this up with fresh water so that it's just basically flushing and rinsing this coral all the way. So, uh, all right, let's take care of our frags. Got a few frags of the tab travertine. Gonna grab a couple pieces of limestone right here, because this is an encrusting coral. I'm not sure if these have been rinsed before. So here we go. We'll rinse them off a little bit, get that dust off. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, that uh, this is pretty much done and I can actually kind of, I can actually put it all the way back in place and still can drain right into the sink. I love this part, I love this part. It took me a really long time to, uh, come up with this solution because I just didn't, I wanted this to be just super easy to use. So, time to glue a couple frags. Boo, boo, boo. Alrighty, this is gonna be a, a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. Oh, I only have four. So we're gonna do like, like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Like that. Actually, this one looks like it's ready to encrust pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna put this guy right here. Oh, poor little pod, let me pick him up. Poor guy, and put him in one of the reef tanks, here we go. Speaking of which, the uh, Red Sea Monopore tank is absolutely killing it. Get in there, buddy, get in there. There he is, oh, come on, be all right, be all right. There he is, go, go little guy, go before the fish eats you. Somebody's gonna find you, oh, oh, oh. I don't know what happened to him, all right. So, last but not least, Gonna go ahead and, um, oh, look at that, look at that, look at that, it's so easy. It's so easy. Just like that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put you on there. Just like that. And then when this guy, when this guy overgrows that, I'll just put him onto one of these. And then you go over here, and then we're gonna put a nice big dollop for the big guy. Oh man, it is very, very rewarding to finally cut this guy up. So I just want you to realize that I just made four frags and set up the bandsaw at the same time I was holding a camera and just made four quick frags. And the, you know, the bandsaw is just like cleaning itself over there, water flowing through it. And uh, I'm just gonna, whoop. <laughs> I totally forgot to put glue down on this one. But anyway, I'm gonna take care of those frags. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this uh, bandsaw hack, the self-cleaning bandsaw. It looks so good over there. I'm very happy about this. This is just one of many uh, just kind of creative improvements I wanna make to aquarium devices in the future. Um, thanks for tuning in this video. If you have any questions about coral fragging or ideas about how to streamline this process, hit me up in the comments below. And uh, thanks for uh, being a part of this community. Catch you guys on the next video. Later.